ever given Jared Hutch the respectability he wants and says he's now entitled to. While he admits to associating with major criminals, he claims he retired from crime when he last came out of prison 23 years ago. He's still, however, known as a crime boss, and for this, he blames the tabloid media in general and one newspaper in particular. If the Sunday World particularly, if they're writing about incidents that's happening for the last 10, 15 years, no matter who is shot in Dublin, or who does a robbery, or who is doing drugs, they throw my photograph in right beside them all the time. They make it out that uh, Jerry Hutch, the, the boss of crime, and if they put me in with a photograph with people who were shot and they're saying I'm the boss of crime, it makes me look like that I'm the leader of this pack and all that type of stuff, which is totally untrue. In a statement to Primetime this afternoon, the Sunday World said it stands over everything it has written about Mr Hutch over the years. But you are a convicted criminal. Oh yes, a convicted criminal, yeah, I know that. But not a convicted armed robber, not a convicted hitman, you know, no, not a convicted drug dealer, no, there's so many things, you know. Jared Hutch was born into poverty on the 12th of April 1963, and it's poverty he blames for his own criminality. Well, as a kid, like, I mean, my first conviction was for stealing a red bottle of lemonade. I got a fine, and then I was involved in another crime as a kid, stealing and breaking into shops. There was, there was nothing around. I mean, forced up, best dressed. I had no choice. You had to get into crime to feed yourself. My mind, dress yourself. Poverty is not an excuse for committing crime. I have served in some of the more uh, neglected areas of this city, and the amount of decent people that I've met far, far, far outweighs the people who have gone and committed crime. Uh, they never would uh, steal to put bread on their table. In Mountjoy Prison, 15 thrown into it. I have a kid now, 15, and I look at the kid and I say, my God, when I was 15, I was in prison. I mean, I was in prison with murderers, rapists, bank robbers, everything in a male prison full of all them. I mean, that, that's not right. It was like going to college for criminals. Jared Hutch was always different, somewhat distant from those he grew up with in the north inner city. He taught himself to read and write in prison, didn't drink, smoke or take drugs. And he says he despises drugs because of what they do to individuals and communities. What would concern me is the media linking me to the drug trade. The drug culture is the scourge of the country. All towns everywhere has it. But I mean, the, the Justice Minister and the, uh, and the department should make it illegal to have drugs in your system. And go into a party, people taking drugs, arrest them, take a DNA, you have drugs in your system, it's against the law. Now you're nicked. The Hutch family name is well known in organised crime circles in Dublin. Not just because of Jared's reputation, but also because of the activities of his nephews, Derek Delboy Hutch, the late Christopher Bouncer Hutch, and Gary Hutch. These pictures are horrific, blood being washed off the streets following a murder. But this is the shocking reality of gangland crime today, where there's no respect for human life. Gary Hutch was driving this Jeep when Patrick Doyle was attacked in it and shot dead in Spain last month. I feel if they're involved in serious crime, they're very foolish to be involved in serious crime, but, like, I mean... I mean, nephews, there's, there's probably 50 guys out there or 50 family members with the same name as Hutch, and if one of them gets into trouble, whether he's a relative or a friend, it lands on my door with the media. I'm thrown in. My photograph is thrown in. But they are serious players. They are serious players. Well, I have kids myself. I have a wife and I have five kids, and my kids are not involved in crime. But Gary Hutch was also accused of shooting Paul Dicey Riley in December 2006. Riley first made a statement to Garthy in hospital, but subsequently not only retracted it, he also went to court and said he had gotten all mixed up and didn't know what he had been saying. Gary Hutch was acquitted of the charges. Wasn't there a meeting of the Hutches after that? No, I wasn't involved in any meeting with anybody. I mean, if... 
like Dicey Riley was uh, alleged that he was shot and, and the young lad was arrested and put in custody and he faced trial on it. And, he made uh, a statement identifying Gary as the shooter? Against him, that he'd done it and then he retracted the statement. And, and how did that happen? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, this, this people get shot and he's in hospital on a dying bed, he's liable to say anything. Well, he's not really. It came to some arrangement that, that he must have, uh, have realised it wasn't him. I don't know exactly the details of it, but if he changed his statement, he changed his statement. People would make statements and they would, you know, at the particular time, they would have every intention of standing by them. Uh, then all of a sudden they would either get a phone call or a shot fired through their door or a petrol bomb up against their house or, and the next thing they would be in touch with you and saying, look, I'm sorry, but I can't give that evidence and uh, I want to withdraw, withdraw my statement. The Gardaí haven't laid a glove on Jared Hutch in over a quarter of a century. He was last convicted of a criminal offence in 1983 and insists he hasn't committed a crime since. People here feel he's the victim of a campaign of vilification. Yeah, come on, say what? What do you want to say? The want to leave this man alone. Good hell, something. Jared Hutch right. built this boxing club, Corinthians, in Dublin's north inner city, and he helps fund it out of his own pocket. And whether or not that's the proceeds of crime, it's the kind of amenity that's badly needed in the area but hasn't been provided by the state. It's also a vivid illustration of the influence and power he wields within this community and the respect and fear he engenders in the criminal community. Well, yeah, probably so, but it's not like back off or I'll do this. It doesn't have to be said. Yeah, well, maybe so. Yeah, if that's it, that's it. But I would have done that on numerous occasions, I mean. A man of influence? Probably so. Like, uh, I mean, a guy came up to me one day, one of the councillors, one of the local councillors, and he said, there's a guy there and he's owed 30 grand, or not 30 grand, 10 grand for, for drugs, and, and the drug dealer is giving him a terrible time, and he's telling them that he's going to get you, the sorter. I says, well, tell him that the kid gave me the money, and that's the end of that. It is the end of it. Rather than see some kid getting seriously injured because he owes a debt, which is disgraceful, but these things happen. And if you, you can just say, oh, it's nothing to do with me, which it isn't, but if some woman comes over here you grew up with and says, as soon as, you have to kind of give her a dig out. That type of thing, you know. What about the, the criminal that sort of sets himself up as the mediator in the community, the guy who says that he can talk to both the ordinary people and the criminals who are terrorising the community? Mr. Fixit. The Gardaí are the only lawful authority to deal with crime in this country. That's our responsibility. We're, we're custodians of the peace. That's our job. What I would say to people living in communities is to give anybody that sets themselves up in that position a very wide berth. What sanctions has that person? And that can only lead to more criminality and more pain and trauma for people. Another reason why he's feared is because he was suspected of being involved in the murder of Mel Cox, a scrap dealer who, in the summer of 1987, was shot dead in the garden of his Blanchardstown home. It's widely believed, but like so much about him, it has never been proven that Jared Hutch did it, and he vehemently protests his innocence. Did you know Mel Cox? No. You didn't know? Didn't know. He was from the northern city? From the northern city, and I didn't know Mel Cox. I heard of him been shot dead, but I didn't know him. A 43-year-old scrap dealer, he was shot in the front garden of his house in Blanchardstown in the summer of 1987. Yeah. He was from your community? Yeah, but I didn't know him. Do you think he's part of the reason why you have a reputation of, of a man to be feared? It probably is, but I never met that man. And, like, I'd, I'd, I'd know his wife and, and their family, but I've never met that man. Did you have a row with him in a pub? No. Because that's the word down there? Yeah, but that's all nonsense, because I've never had a row with the man. And that that's the reason why he ended up dead? Hmm. Well, it's totally people in the without community. foundation. Sorry? It's, it's not true. Jared Hutch is unique in that he can move with apparent ease among criminals and law-abiding citizens. He says he sleeps well at night, and is not worried about getting shot in his bed. 
not like Martin Foley or the few of his other surviving contemporary criminals. Jared Hutch has not been convicted of any of the armed robberies he's been blamed for. In fact, he has no conviction for armed robbery and hasn't been convicted of any crime in the last 25 years. Jared Hutch says his crime is tax evasion and whether that's true or not, he's now living very well off the proceeds of crime. He may be retired, but few believe he's fully reformed. My house is broken into twice. I'm talking about victims of crime. Like, I've been a victim of crime. And what did you lose? I called the ambulance for them.